Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is Easter Sunday. He lives, he lives, he lives. Welcome to Vernon Park Church of God live broadcast. Uh, I'm excited because we've got a word today coming from the pastor uh, for this Easter Resurrection Sunday. And I believe you're going to be blessed and encouraged. So would you go ahead, do a virtual hand clap and receive our pastor, Pastor Gerald January Sr. Well, hello and happy Easter Resurrection Day to all of you. I'm so grateful to God that uh, even though we long to be with you uh, physically, can't do that. Um, the Lord has worked it out that we have technology that we can at least worship together. And uh, today I um, want to celebrate with you uh, by speaking from the topic, a good day in bad times. A good day in bad times. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 6, and also we'll be going to Matthew 26 as well. So let's get in the word together. The Bible says, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. And in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. A good day in bad times. Now, folks, we know it's common uh, to judge a day by the events that occur in that day. And... Um, Sometimes we even curse that time. I got to admit to y'all that uh, this COVID-19 pandemic is a bad thing. It's a horrible thing. You got friends and family that are isolated from each other, can't get to each other. Uh, some of you are, have been, most of us have been laid off our jobs. The economy is flat. And even more than that, um, there's all this uh, unexpected grief. Um, everybody knows somebody that's been affected or infected or families that have been affected. And many of us know folks that have passed away. And I got to admit, um, I'm having a hard time. I've lost a lot of brethren um, in the gospel, even the last two weeks. Um, one group in northeast, northern, uh, actually eastern Michigan, where I'm from, lost nine pastors and bishops, including uh, a dear, dear friend of mine, Pat Bishop P.A. Brooks. Uh, I can't tell you how difficult this is uh, to know these brothers, these brothers and sisters that are gone from us. And yes, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, but uh, not even to be able to honor them with a funeral. It's a rough thing. And some of us want to uh, even curse the day that we're living in, the time we're living in. But uh, it was Cabot Robert who said this. He said, now, if you don't think every day is a good day, just try missing one. So that kind of puts us back in uh, the square right here. So I want to just spend the last few minutes we have together today just talking about how a good day can happen in bad times. I'll give you three points. Point number one, things can change overnight. Things can change overnight. Now, if you know the history of uh, this particular scripture, you know that the disciples, uh, Jesus had turned a corner in popularity. They had a good Palm Sunday. People started kind of liking them and they were greeting them into the big city. And uh, even on Thursday, they had a good meal. Uh, turned out to be their last supper together. And then Jesus did an odd thing. Jesus washed the feet of those that served him. Usually it's the other way around, but uh, that's what happened. And then Judas left in a hurry. Uh, Bible goes on to say in Matthew chapter 26, verse 30, 
when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And uh, tradition demanded that hymns be sang that evening after they do that. Uh, so Jesus leads them away from the house of this man who basically um, had allowed them to come in and have that meal. And uh, he wanted to leave that spot, I believe, because he didn't want to implicate this man in what was about to happen. He wanted to be part of the narrative. And so he leads them away from the house. And because Passover is always when there's a full moon, they had light to travel. Have y'all ever noticed how it's amazing how fast things can change? America, things have changed. Our normal is so new. We, we had to wear masks to go outside when just a month ago, we were trying to get everybody to look at our faces and be our friends. So things can change overnight. I'm aware of that. Number next. Some nights just seem longer than others. Some nights just seem longer than others. In verse 31 of Matthew 26, the Lord uh, told them, he said, now this very night, you will all fall away on account of me. He had brought them all together. He said, but tonight, this is going to be a long night. This is not going to be good. And uh, I know that all nights are the same, same length on our watches and on our clocks. But some nights just seem longer. Nighttime has an unusual effect on bad things. Nighttime magnifies all the bad stuff. So it was late. Jesus uh, had wanted to pray. So he leads them to a place called the oil press or Gethsemane. And he calls his uh, three closest buddies, Peter, James, and John. I say, I want y'all to come over here and join me and pray with me. But they were tired. Can I tell you something? People still get tired. Even though they love you, they get tired of uh, working with you and helping you. And these folks were just wore out. So Jesus goes to pray in the spot that he normally prayed, and he had a tough time praying through it. Maybe during this season, you all are having a tough time praying through, but he finally gets through. He gets through in prayer. He breaks through in prayer. He feels at ease in his spirit. He says, God, Father, not my will, but your will be done. And then about midnight, all hell breaks out. You ever have a night when everything uh, happens but sleep? It's not the fluffiness of the pillow or the confidence of your mattress. It's not that the temperature is not just right, but you can't sleep at all. Everything is happening except for sleep. Down in verse 47 of um, Matthew 26, the Bible says, while he was still speaking, right in the middle of his message to his disciples, Judas, who was one of the 12 disciples, he arrives and he brings with him a large crowd armed with swords and clubs. And they're sent from the chief priests and from the elders of the people. Pastors, I know sometimes that uh, there, there have been occasion when uh, folks bring knives to service to stab folks in the back. And, and that's what was happening here. One of the men he trusted the most brought betrayal to his camp. And I want to say this to you all in my last few minutes. It's incredible how much bad can fit into one night. Think about it. Just think about this. That night, a close friend sold him out. During that evening, right after this wonderful dinner they had, that night he was arrested and tried six times in one night and convicted for crimes he did not commit. All that happened in one night. That night he got assaulted. Yes, he was the man of God, but he was assaulted physically and he was assaulted emotionally. Then somebody went and told his mama some bad stuff about him that night. And Pilate's wife had a bad dream about him that same night. And to top it all off, that night, a dear friend of his, Peter, who had stabbed a man in the head, cut off his ear to protect Jesus, on that same night, he later lied and said, I don't even know him. 
It's a really rough night. It's amazing how many bad things can happen in one night. And that bad night eventually turned into our Good Friday. But it's still bad for him. They beat him almost unconscious. They tore his body apart. And then on top of that, to add salt to those wounds, they let a guilty man go free instead of him. Now, I believe that some folks that might be listening or watching me today, whether you're watching live or watching this uh, on a podcast, you've had a season that seems to be just a long, bad streak that won't end. But I'm here to let you know today that a good day can happen even during bad times. Well, as you read the story in the Bible, y'all know that reality had set in. It had set in like it set in for us. Some folks were hoping and believing, just like as a pastor, I was hoping and believing that this thing wouldn't last too long. But today we know it's Easter Sunday. We're not even in church. I had to put on a tie, y'all. I Normally for this setting, I won't wear a tie, but this is Resurrection Sunday. And I just said, look, even if I'm at home, I'm going to put on time because this is the the greatest day, the holy holiday of my faith because he rose. But there's a reality that we have right now, and this reality might last a while. Jesus' followers uh, had had two nights, two long nights, to lay awake, to cry, to even recall what he had said and how they laughed with him, the miracles they saw, they were reminiscing. And it had been two nights. And then it was time uh, for the Sabbath to end. And verse one, you read earlier in Luke chapter 24, and it says, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Sunday um, began by the Jewish time at sundown on Saturday. So sometime late that night, which is still the Sabbath, they started off to the cemetery. And they, uh, when they started off, it was dark. Uh, but by the time they arrived at the grave, at the tomb, it was early uh, dawn. And they were going to try to make the best of a bad situation. And I thank God for those people that know how to find a way to make the best of a bad situation. There's some folks, man, no matter how bad things are, they look on the bright side. And so they they, they had seen the horrible beating and crucifixion of Jesus. And uh, uh, it was amazing that women were the last ones to leave the funeral and the, and the first ones to get there that morning. And these ladies were coming to even to beautify uh, this death scene, this, this place. The Bible said, though, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And in those days, they would close the tombs because they wanted to keep robbers away and keep the animals from going in and and, and, and damaging the body. Uh, But uh, when you go to verse 3, things were different. When they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. But go back in your Bible and circle the phrase wondering, or maybe in some of your Bibles it says perplexed um, uh, about the missing body, that what they had planned to do, uh, they couldn't do. And the Bible said they began to wonder, they were perplexed. In the Greek, it means to lose one's way. Today, many folks are perplexed. They are completely uh, lost. They can't find purpose. They can't find hope. They can't find peace. But it was D.L. Moody who said that the resurrection is the keystone of the arch of which our faith is supported. And so we can shout hallelujah even in the midst of a pandemic. In verse uh, number five, the Bible says, in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. They didn't go to the worship, but they got afraid of what they were seeing in the midst of what they had planned. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? Got to preach right there. Said, he is not here. He has risen. Hallelujah. Just like a lot bad can happen in one night, 
I want to leave you with this. It's amazing how much good can be fit into one day. Think about it. That morning, they were, they were trying to figure out how they were going to talk to the soldiers about how to move the stone away. And they end up having a conversation with angels. That same morning, a memorial service got canceled because he had risen. By that afternoon, Jesus goes and meets in person with his depressed disciple named Peter, who had let him down. And what he does that afternoon, on that same day, he heals a depressed heart, like he's done for many, many of us. That evening, Jesus even cooks fish for 10 of his closest friends. So good can turn out to happen, even in a bad, bad time, just like the time we're having right now. I know God can take light and shine into the darkest situation. So I wanna encourage you all today, let me end with uh, this statement, this saying. I have no idea who said it, but I love it. So somebody said, your worst days are never so bad that you are beyond the reach of God's grace. And your best days are never so good that you're beyond the need of God's grace. America, let me tell you something. The grace of God, we never deserve it but we can never live without it. And I want to say to you today, even though this is a bad time, it's a good day. If your children are right there running around your house, I know y'all got cabin fever, but if your babies are running around, give them a hug. They get grown so fast. Get grown. Wow, that's really good English, Gerald. But uh, love on them. If God's blessed you to have food on your table today, bow your head and bless them for it. Thank you. Thank God for what you have. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to know that the grace of God is here for all of us. And if you don't know the Lord, I want to encourage you today. You don't have to be in church. We always said that. You don't have to be in church to find the Lord. And guess what? Today you're not. But he's right there where you are. He's aware of your entire situation. Don't look for the living God among the dead. He's alive and he is risen. God bless you. You have a wonderful day and you go in peace and God's grace. We love you and we pray to God that uh, this will be over soon and we'll see you very soon. All right, family, don't forget, stay connected on this Resurrection Sunday. Stay connected at bpcog.org for all things Vernon Park. Also, our Facebook handle is uh, at BPCOG Linwood, at BPCOG Linwood. Our Twitter handle is Vernon Park, C-H-U-R, and the number two. And our Instagram, follow us there as well, is at Vernon Park Church. Don't forget this Wednesday, check out the A Kiss from God as well as the Bible study. And then on Thursdays, y'all can roll with me on OMG at six o'clock. And then keep it with that six o'clock theme, frankly uh, speaking, Friday at six o'clock. And then on Saturday, of course, six o'clock is our SALT, our newest Bible study. We come right back here on Sunday. We're staying connected. Be encouraged. God bless you this Resurrection Easter Sunday. We absolutely love and miss you. And I am sending you some virtual hugs. Bye-bye. <laughs>